Hi, you're welcome to Hello Jujas Ideas. You are probably watching this video because you want to kickstart your tech career as a front end or full stack developer, as the case may be. Brace yourself because the world of HTML is about to become your playing ground, and this YouTube video is your golden ticket to it. You don't have any prior experience, it is totally fine. We are going to be starting from square one, like from the basics. We, I'm going to be taking you through every concept one after the other. Um, it's going to be easy, it's going to be understanding and within a short time you're going to be building a strong foundation in your web development career. At the end of this course you're going to be applying everything you're learning into a real world project. You're going to be creating a sim single page portfolio website. It's going to be looking like this and trust me you're going to be doing this with just HTML. No CSS files, no JavaScript files, just HTML. Before we move on, I don't want you to see HTML as one other technology you can add to your No, I want you to see HTML as your canvas for digital expression. HTML is something you can use to express yourself. So with the use of HTML, you can do more than just create a simple website. You can just dive into the world of crafting content, designing forms and embedding multimedia, combining all these things together to pass information to people. Your journey to becoming a web developer starts here. Your journey to becoming a web creator begins here right now. Stick with me and let us make your web dreams come to life. I'll see you in the introduction. Hi, you're welcome to the introduction of this course. Now, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It is the basis for all web applications. Any application that you can find on the internet, the, the baseline is HTML, to be very honest. So HTML is what you view on your web browser, basically. Anytime you open your web browser, any page you arrive on, the HTML is what is going to be displaying. Now, you can use this HTML with other technologies, say CSS, JavaScript, SaaS, jQuery and all that. But what will be you are going to be linking them with your HTML document. So after linking them with your HTML document, the web page will display everything with reference to those other documents. So without HTML, you don't have a website, to be very honest. Without HTML, you don't have a website. So it is very important for your foundation of HTML to be very solid, which is one of the reasons why this video is going to be as detailed as it is. A simple HTML document is going to be looking like this. It's going to be looking like this. And if you if you take a good look at what I have over here now, you can see the doc type, you can see the HTML tag, you can see the head section, and you can see the body. So the HTML tag basically is what is carrying the whole HTML document. The head section is where you have meta information about the web page. Meta information like the author of the web page, the date the web page was uh, published, and so, some other, the title of the document, the link to where you find the favicon of the page and all that. Any meta information about the HTML document will be present in the head section. Every element you find on the web page is present in the body section. The head section carries the meta information while the body carries the element on the web page itself. If you visit a website, every element on the web uh, you can see, you can interact with on the website basically is in the body of the HTML document. So like I said in the beginning of this video, you use a web browser to, to view an HTML document. So the web browsers like Google Chrome, Safari, Mozilla Firefox, and Edge, Microsoft Edge, any web browser you can think of, these are uh, tools by, with which you can view the content of an HTML document. Before we move on, I would like to make a bit of explanation about how the internet works and how it relates with HTML. Okay, so um, if you want to visit any website on the internet, the first thing you do, you open your web browser, you type in something at the address bar, www.google.com. So that thing you are typing is what we refer to as a uniform resource locator. So that uniform resource locator, you launch a request into the World Wide Web, it will locate the server where the website is hosted. So it will go there, request for information. Now this information is going to be sent 
to your web browser in form of data packets, bits of data to be sent over the network to your computer. Everything that is happening on the internet is basically two or more computers talking to each other. So when the information gets to your computer, the, the information, it is going to be downloaded to your web browser. Your web browser will interpret the information gotten from the network. After interpreting it, it will present everything in form of an HTML document. So this HTML document is what you are going to be viewing on your web browser. Now this HTML document, how to create it, how to create element, how to add meta information to your HTML document is what this course is all about. In this course I'm going to be showing to you how to create all your elements, how to create this meta information and with time you are going to be a master of HTML. So thank you very much, I'll see you in the next video. Hi, yeah, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install the text editor on your device. So I want to believe that not all of us have access to a computer. So I've uh, taken the mobile users to into consideration. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you four guides. So I'm going to be giving you a guide for Windows, one for Mac, one for Android, and one for iOS. Now, if you check the description below, you will see all four links in the description too. But just in case, I want to show you where the video is on the channel. So instead of using the description, you can just go find it. If you come to the channel, if you go under videos, now these are the videos you are looking for. This one is for Mac, how to install Visual Studio Code on Mac. This is for Windows, how to install Visual Studio Code on Windows 10. Then how to install, how to code on iPhone or iPad. So this is the guide to install your text editor for iPhone or iPad. While this is how to write HTML, CSS on Android phones. So you can just come here, look for whatever, um, look for the guide for your platform and you are good to go. So in this video, I'm going to, in this course, I'm going to be using VS Code because I'm going to be coding on Linux. So it's available for Linux too. But if you, if there is no VS Code for, there is no VS Code application for mobile users. So I have to look for an alternative for you guys. So if you are on iPhone or iPad, this is your guide. If you are on Android, this is your guide over here. If you are on Windows and if you are on Mac. So thank you very much. I will see you in the next video where we start coding proper. Bye for now. Hi, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be talking about comments. Um, comments basically is what you use to label your code or to debug your code. So in labeling your code, I mean, comment helps you to give some sort of information about what is happening in whatever part of your HTML code at all. While debugging, I mean, um, you can temporarily use it to disable some elements or enable some elements or to write some sort of comments to help you understand where a particular error is coming from. So getting into it, um, the structure of our HTML elements in VS Code to bring uh, out the, um, the the HTML structure, you can just write HTML. I, I love to use this one that says HTML5. So I'll just choose this one. You can see everything I have here. So um, this is going to be the title. Then this is where I write all the elements I want to write. Let me zoom in to make it um, better. Okay. So. So I'm all zoomed in now, so it will make it easier. Now, um, I have my doc type, my HTML. This is what is telling the web browser that this particular HTML element is in English language. So these are meta information about the um, HTML element that I that I'm trying to create the HTML document rather. These are meta information about the document. So all the elements in the HTML elements. This is where I'm going to be writing it in the body tag. So let's say let's just bring in like some few elements just to explain what I want to say. So I can say I can bring in a paragraph. Then I'll say um, I'll do something like this is my first paragraph okay 
So if I should save this, um, the pretty I have pretty installed in my VS Code, so you can just go ahead and install it if you haven't. So this is my first paragraph. Then I can use this go live to automatically view it in my web browser. So you can see what I have over here in the web browser. Um, let me zoom in a bit so you see exactly what is going on. So this is my first paragraph. This is the original thing that the HTML document is showing me. This is the original thing. If you view the page source of this particular page, you can see the page source over here. You can see the page source over here. Let me zoom out. Now, the reason why you are seeing all this um, script tag over here is because I'm, I'm loading it over a server, which is the, um, the live server. That is the reason why you are seeing this one. But normally, this is the only thing that you are going to be seeing. So you can see, you can see the comment over here, code injected by live server. I wasn't the one that wrote all these ones. If you see the code I wrote, this is the code I wrote myself. This is my first paragraph. But if you come over here, you see the comment that is written here, code injected by live server. So this is telling you that the, this comment over here is basically letting you know that this the following code, it is not the user that wrote it, it is the extension that wrote it. So viewing the page, you can see that um, the English language, the UTF-8, the viewports, the width, everything is just the same way I wrote it over here. You understand? So if I want to add a comment, I can say um, in VS Code, um, you can press Control question mark. It, it, it's the short, uh, short quote for you to create comment. So you write your comment over here. For example, creating the... No, 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 my creating is wrong. Creating the first um, paragraph elements. Okay, so this is, this is an HTML element. And this is the comment that is telling you, um, the, the person that is going to be reading the code, that the following element is just the first paragraph element I'm creating in this document. So if I should save this, it automatically reloads the web browser as soon as I use Control S to save because of this live server that I'm loading it over. It makes your development very easy. So come back here. Um, this is the document over here. So if I should reload this, I should reload this. You can see creating the first paragraph element. Okay. So if I want to create another element, let's say uh, span, I can say this is the span tag. Okay. So if I should save this and I come back to my document, you can see this is the span tag. But for me to comment this code to make me to make it more readable, I can come and say, okay, here is the first span tag of the element. Okay, if I should save this and I go back to my web browser, guess what? I don't have the comment over here because normally the web browser is going to ignore the comment. The comment is the is for the code side. It is when you are reading the code itself that you are going to be viewing. They, they, are, they are going to be seeing the comments. The web browser is going to ignore the comments. If you come here and you reload it, you can see this is the span tag and this is the comment we wrote. Now, one other usefulness of uh, commenting in HTML, like I said, is for debugging. If for one reason or the other, you want to temporarily de de disable this span tag over here without having to delete it, you can just comment it out using the same control question mark on your keyboard. I'm currently on, on Linux, but it works for Windows, and I'm very sure it works for Mac as well. So it's, it's, it, you can see that this span tag over here is now a comment. So obviously, if I should load, if I should save this, and I go back to my web browser, you can see the span tag is gone because I've converted it to a comment. It is no longer an HTML element. So get it, get it the way it is. This is the span tag over here. I've converted it to an HTML element, so it, it is not going to display anymore. So that is it basically. If I want to bring it back, I can just control question mark again. If I should save this and go back, you can see the span tag is back. So that will be all for commenting for now. I'm going to be using it often. So yeah, thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.
okay guys um you're welcome back so in this video we're going to be treating elements so what is an html element basically I've, you've had me say element countless number of times so an element is everything from uh, uh, defined by a start tag it contains some content then an ending tag basically everything you see on the web page the images the text uh, items the videos the audios everything on a web page is an element an html element and the web page is basically an html document so um let me bring up my my structure don't forget we are using html5 alt z gives me um the word wrap okay so normally if you want to let me give some room here so if you want to type um add an an, an element to this um, html document for example the element is going to be having a tag name so tag name you close this so you can see this is the opening of the tag name and this is the close this is the opening um, of the html element and this is the closing of the html element now we have some elements that are self-closing that you're going to be having something like this so this one won't be there at all so it, it, it will just be like this. We we'll still get to self-closing um, elements, HTML tags that are self-closing. We we'll still get there, but for now, let's just um, focus on this one. So this is where the content is going to be. Whatever content is going to be contained by the HTML element. So moving on, what are the HTML elements that we have? I'm going to be introducing you to some few HTML elements, especially the text elements. The text elements. So. Um, before bringing in the text elements, let's talk about the ones that you are familiar with already. This is an HTML element, this HTML over here. It's an element. Um, this uh, head tag. The body tag, the head tag, all these are HTML elements in the HTML document. Okay? So, um, we also have nested elements too elements that contain other elements for example you see this head uh, tag over here this head tag over here contains some other elements in it this title element cannot contain another element so it is not nested but head can contain other elements this html can contain the head and it can contain the body so obviously it is a nested element you get so moving on um some of the html elements i'll be introducing you to now is the heading one and the paragraph okay let's just keep it simple now um headings are basically text elements so h1 is for heading one so i can say this is the, the heading one then we also have the paragraph tag which is p this is a paragraph tag okay if i should save this you can see the prettier extension is helping me to format my code properly when i save but this code for us to view it you can just go live another thing you can do is to copy parts copy path you go to your web browser you paste it here okay you can see but i love to use the server because every time i save um my document over here it will just reload the web page for me so it makes my work way easier okay you can see the heading one over here and you can see the paragraph tag you can see the heading one and the paragraph tag so the heading one is bigger than the paragraph tag if i bring in let me show you the heading two okay h2 so this is the heading I should save this and I come back to my web browser you can see this is the heading 2 it is smaller than the heading 1 for now all these elements that we are having over here they are unstyled I mean unstyled meaning I've not added any styling to it so obviously it will be looking gibberish but just let's just hold on to this for now so um, another uh, HTML element that I will be introducing you to for now is the line break line break it comes in very handy once in a while so basically the line break is something like this it's a self-closing um html tag if i should save this you can see this is the line break over here 
let me view the page source so you can see if i should view this page source over you can see the line break over here it is the reason why it is creating that just one line spacing between the h2 and the paragraph so this line spacing over here let me inspect it you can use ctrl shift i to inspect your web page so let me just you can see now let me open the body you can see you can see this is the h2 and this is the paragraph you can see this uh, line break over here let me remove the line break so you see if i should remove the line break you can see that the line break is not there anymore it is now a comment so it is not going to be have any effect but you can see the paragraph you can see the paragraph so that is that is basically the line break element we have so many other html elements that um you will have to learn um but um for now we are just going to be sticking with these ones then subsequently in the course i'll be introducing you to another one but before we go um before we leave this particular lesson i have to point out that html is not case sensitive html is not case sensitive so h1 h1 opening and h1 closing is still the same thing as h1 this is capital h1 okay you can see that this is h1 over here and this is small letter h i should save this and i come back you can see that both of them they work just fine so html to say is not case sensitive it's not case sensitive unlike so many other programming languages out there today html is not case sensitive so um another thing you should know is that make sure that you always close your html tags so this is not a self-closing tag so it has to be closed for example if i should come here and i do this and i do this if you do this in some frameworks it will even throw up an error but you can see now that in this particular case now the web browser is adding it to you for you automatically to show you that it is important the web browser is the one that is adding it for you automatically you understand but please and please make sure that you close all tags that you open you can see it is closing it for me automatically um that will be all for this particular lesson i'll see you in the next one bye for now hi guys um you're welcome back so in this video we're going to be talking about attributes so attributes give you additional information about the html elements you want to add to the web page you are, you are it's your way of giving the web page extra information about how to display this particular element that is to display so all html elements have attributes one attribute or the other and attributes they provide like i said additional information about the element attributes are always specified in the start of the tag attributes are specified in the start of the tag don't forget um let me say html5 then come to the body so now i i, I wrote something like tag name in one of my previous one of the previous videos so this the start of this tag over here this is where you are going to be specifying the attributes of this particular element so they come in name value pairs attributes come in name value pairs for example you can have something like name or you can have something like id equal to um maybe first element or you can have something like class equal to say upper left um, logo or something you understand so this is just you giving additional information about this particular tag element that you want to add to this web page so let us treat some popular um attributes that you're going to be encountering on your journey as a web developer so the first one you are, we are going to be treating is the href attributes so we're going to be treating the okay this href attribute over here 
This href attribute is found in, in the hyperlink element. There is a particular element called the A element, the anchor link. This element over here on your VS code, if you press A, it will give you all these um, options over here. So the A blank, um, the A link, the A mail, but, but for now, the A link is what we want. So if you just click enter ordinarily, it's going to be giving you the href attribute. So um, let me just put this Naira sign over here and um, say maybe go to google okay if i should save this um action button over here. okay so you can see what i have over here this anchor link basically you use it to uh, uh, to link web pages together that is it to link web pages together so this href over here is the link of the next page like if you click on this particular go to google where should it take you to so that is how the href attribute works. You put in the link that the you want the user to the, you you want this particular link to take the user to. You enter the link over here. If you go to the web browser, if if I click on it, nothing happens. It it, it is giving me this pound sign primarily because that is what I asked it to give me. Let me zoom in so it can be more visible. So if I should come here and say https https dot slash slash google dot com if i should save this and i come back here if i should click on this it will be taking me to google dot com you can see this is google dot com over here but going back um another thing you can do is to um to make this particular link open in a new window in a new tab rather so now apart from the href attribute you are going to be using the target attribute. So this target attribute now, if the value is underscore blank, it is going to be opening the link in a new tab. For example, I should, if I should load this now and I click on go to Google, you can see it is opening it in a new tab entirely and the original tab it is, is retained. So this new tab, I can do whatever I want to do there. That is if you are using target underscore blank. So this is another attribute entirely of the anchor link. So those are two attributes I've shown you. The next attribute that we're going to be talking about is the SRC attribute, the SRC attribute. So you might be working and um, you have to link some documents to the current HTML document. That is where you use the SRC attribute. The SRC attribute, okay? Attributes, okay? So the next thing we want to do is to let me let me introduce you to the image um, element now img. So this is the image element over here. Now this src over here is what um, is going to be um, the value of this src is going to be showing us the source of the the image URL. You can see the suggestion, the description that VS Code is bringing for me. The image URL is mandatory for the img element. So now. This alt tag over here that the image is giving me is if for one reason or the other we can't find the image at this particular source, what should be displayed? So let me just write whatever here. You can see there is no image at this particular link. So the image. If I should save this and I come back here, you can see the image. The image. So let me use the line break element. So we are, it is just proper that you close it in some HTML, uh, in some browsers, it will just ignore this one, but it is just proper that you close it. So now the image is um, going down. I'm, I'm, I've given two line spaces from this anchor link to the image. So moving on, you can see the image cannot be found. So it just gave me the um, an image icon showing that this is supposed to be an image. Then it gives me the alt text that I added. You can see this alt attribute over here. It gave me that particular attribute. So um, now I've downloaded a particular image in the same folder that I'm working with. You can see the image.jpg over here. Now since they are in the same folder, I can just bring it in by saying image.jpg. Since they are in the same folder. So if I should come back here, you can see this is my image over here. Very big. Let me reduce, let me zoom in. You can see. I have to zoom in to 25% to see it. 
you can see how big it is even the link is almost unnoticeable so now how can we correct this we correct it using styling so the way you can there, there are some other attributes that you can bring in that will make the image look way nicer for example you can say you can use the width attribute to say 500 so this is going to reduce the image width to 500 pixels then it will adjust the height accordingly so you can see it has reduced the image width to 500 pixels the next attribute that we are going to be talking about is the height attribute also an attribute of img so h a i g h t okay so if i say maybe the height of 300 and i save this you can see this the, this particular image now the width is 500 and the height is 300 if i should take away this width now it will just bring the height to 300 then it will adjust the width accordingly okay so but if i'm adding the two width and height then it is constraining the image and this can distort the image actually but uh, there are so many ways uh, to work around it so we just leave it as um, that for now now the style attributes the style attributes this attribute is used for styling the style attribute is used for styling for example um let me use i'm going to be using this image tag over here so the style attributes okay so the style attributes to make it neater uh, no copy then come here and um, paste it to make it neater uh, i'm going to be doing something style okay so i can say um border radius say 20 pixels then border 3 pixels solid black now what okay the reason why he gave me this element like this is because like i said pretty is installed so if you have your pretty installed it will every time you save your document it will make it look nicer so um don't forget the source attribute is giving me the image the alt attribute is the 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 image let me use the styled image for this one the styled image so the width is what 500 the height is 300 now i'm adding a bit of styling to it now what i'm having over here is what we call inline styling i will still explain this thing in depth later what i have over here is inline styling i'm styling this element but i'm styling inline so we also have internal styling and external styling but for, uh, this style tag basically you use it for inline styling so it comes in handy in so many ways so you, you can see the image over here now you can see the image over here you can compare the two of them you can compare this is the unstyled image this is the styled image i've used the style element to add a bit of styling to it you can see the border radius the border radius you can see the border radius the edges of the image you can see the edges of this one is, is perfect it's very square edges very perfect but this one is curved edges that is the work of this border radius um, element over here then the border itself showing that black 3% solid is because of this styling element over here this style um, type over here so to set the border now um, this lang attribute we also have the lang attribute the lang attribute is the one used over here this lang attribute to show that this particular document is an English language we have a lot of attributes a lot of them so that will be all for attributes for now so as we progress in the course as i introduce you to more html elements i'll be showing you more um tags that you're going to be using together with every html element that you encounter so thank you very much i'll see you in the next video bye for now hi guys you are welcome back so in this video we're going to be talking about the text elements that we have in html so the text element let me bring back my html structure okay what is it okay the text elements that we're going to be discussing now are elements that you can use to display different kind of text 
in here I have um, the bold text, um, important text, I have italics, I have the subscript and the superscript too. So just um, stay with me. Okay, so the first one we're going to be talking about are the headings. The headings, heading 1, heading 2, heading 3, up to heading 6. So let me see the headings. We have H1. This is heading one. So this is heading two. Let me just copy and paste it to make it faster. This is heading three. Wow. Well, this is heading four. This is heading five. No. Then the last one is heading six. Okay. This is heading six. Okay. So moving on you are going to let me just go live so we can view the results in real time okay so this is heading one this is heading two this is heading three you can see how small the heading six is compared to the heading one so the lesser the heading like the heading uh, heading one basically is bigger than heading two heading two is bigger than heading three heading three is bigger and thicker than heading four so and everything goes down to heading six so these are the first set of text elements we are going to be discussing the second one is the paragraph so let's talk about the paragraph the paragraph okay so for this paragraph we use the p tag the p tag so this p tag over here let me just say lorem 20 it's a vs code shortcut so it's just bring in some dummy text to be used here so you can just type in anything you want there but if you are on vs code you can just say lorem 50 and it will give you 50 characters of dummy text but i don't want that so just save this then you can see because of the number of text I have over here, the prettier extension is formatting the code for me. So don't forget to get that installed. So Lorem, you can see this is the dummy text that we showed, that we added just now. So, and everything is in the P tag. So we also have the span tag. The span tag. So you can say span, any text element you want to put inside is very fine. So let me say lorem 50, then I'll cut the beginning of the, so I can have some uniqueness. I should save this, come back, you can see this is the paragraph over here and this is the span tag, so it works. Um, after that one, I'm going to be showing you the bold text um, tag, so for bold text, it's the B tag, the B tag. So this particular B tag now, it is used like this. Then you bring in your, let me say some important text. Save it, come back here. You can see important text, important text. So let me take this one out. Um, let me add some line break to it. Let me add some line break to it. Another thing I would like to introduce you to at this point is, um, is the inline and block elements. So headings are block elements. While the span and the bold, um, the this B tag, they are both inline elements. An image is an inline element. What do I mean by inline element? Now. Take a good look at what I have over here. Um, if I bring in the heading 1 and the heading 2, both of them are following each other sequentially in the HTML document. But this heading 1 automatically occupies the whole screen. Ctrl Shift I. 
I should come here and I hover. You can see that the heading one is occupying the whole screen down to this point. The whole screen. You can see for the heading two as well. It is occupying the whole screen. Heading three is occupying the whole screen. But if you come to um, this ones over here, let me remove the this line break. Let me remove it. I should remove the line break and I come back. You can see that after displaying the spam tag automatically he brought in important text so it is to tell you that this item over here is an inline element because after displaying the element itself it automatically it, 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 the control is still in the same line it will not occupy the whole screen like all these other headings over here so that is an inline element a block element so come back um so let me bring back my line break to make it better. So if I want to make some text strong, so the strong tag. So I can say the strong element. Save this. Come back here. You can see this be this b tag and the strong element you can see how they are this is also an inline element so if i want this the strong element to be displayed under the important text i will come with a line break i'll come with a line break so we also have the italics italic text so that will be the i tag the i tag so if you want to italicize a particular text, you can just wrap it up in the um, i tag. So, say italicized text, okay. Come back here. You can see italicized text over here. Italicized text over here. So if you want to lay some sort of emphasis on a particular text, we have the em tag. So the em tag, the em tag. So this em tag, this is how you use it. Em size text. Save and come back here. You can see the emphasized text, almost like the italicized text. But there are some sort of differences if you ask me. But um, we have some other um, text elements that we have. We have the small tag, the mark tag, the delete text, the inserted text, the subscript and the superscript. So I'm just going to be taking the subscript and the superscript for now. Then um, I'm just going to be taking the subscript and the superscript for now, so we don't keep this video necessarily long. So every, every time you encounter any element you have to use, you can just garbage into Google for it. Okay. So um, let me say, let me bring back this item one now. The subscript and the script so come here come here okay oh, let me make this a span tag let me say um, x soup 3 let me just use this one as well. X let this one be two. Okay. Take this one out. Then I'll put a line break here. So then let me put another line break here. Because uh, EM is an inline element okay so you can see what i have over here now x raised to the power of three and x subscript two 
so that is how you use the sub and the soup elements if you want to create a super script you use um, this tag if you want to create a subscript I really have to use them but if you encounter it that is what you're supposed to use so I'll stop here for now like I said we have the mark the small the delete and the insert elements but you can always just check through Google for that so thank you very much I'll see you in the next video bye for now hi guys you're welcome back so in this particular video we're going to be talking about images so HTML images there is this particular tag the IMG tag with which you can create um, images in HTML let's get into it um, HTML don't forget we are doing HTML5 then um, we are using the IMG tag so like I said in the previous video the alt tag is going to be is going to be the text that will be displayed if the image cannot be found so let's see the first image okay it should be f i r s t image so the src now um in the previous video where i explained images i just typed the name of the image directly here so this is the folder that is opened in vs code you can see i've added so many other images apart from the first one so i can just decide since this is factorial.png i can just say factorial.png but the proper way to do it is to use this command over here this um, terminal command that will tell the web browser that this particular html element look at the same folder where you have that element then look for a particular image factorial.png this is the proper way to do it so if i should save this and i go live it will open this particular html document in my web browser so you can see so this is one of the banners for one of the videos i have on my youtube channel okay so basically that is the alt the src and the alt tab then i can control the width and the height of the image using the width and the height um attributes like i showed in the previous video so to control the width i can just say with maybe 300 then height maybe 175 if i should save this and i come back here you can see it has controlled the width and the height for me if i want it to be a square image then the width has to be equal to the height so the width and the height to be say 3 300 save this you can see it is not a square image it is not a square image so but you can see that the image is distorted so you should know how to control the width and the height of the image using whatever um figures that is appropriate so let's just add one more image we have the image tag um which of the images do i have let me use this group 9 image then they ought to be the group 9 image this your alt text has to be as descriptive as possible so for it to actually make meaning to somebody that it will be useful to because somebody might be using an internet connection that is very poor so it won't load the image but it will load this alt text so the alt text has to be descriptive of what the image is for it to actually make meaning so the width you say 400 then the height maybe the height is say 300 if i should come to my web browser you can see this is the image over here this is the image over here so it's a mock-up for an ebook so and you can see that the image is an inline element an inline element because as soon as i created this first image it did not transfer control to the next line in the same line it is having this um this particular the second image over here but if i want it to go to the next line I can just use the br tag yeah okay so save this so you can see it is going to the next line now so basically that is all you should know about images for now i'll see you in the next tutorial well, bye for now 
hi guys um you're welcome back so in this particular uh, video we are going to be talking about layout elements now um html has several semantic elements that they can use to describe different layouts and uh, different parts of a web page depending on, on a particular layout if you are working on a say a real estate um website the website might have a sidebar it will have the header, it will have the navigation, it will have the article part if it is a, a website that has a blog in it. Then it will have the footer and all those things. So we have some elements, some elements that has, um, we refer to, to the kind of HTML written using this element as semantic HTML because it describes the layout of the website, what is supposed to be here and what is supposed to be here. So now, the semantic um, elements, the layout elements that we have in HTML, we are going to be discussing them right away. So, for example, the first one we are going to be talking about is the header element. Okay, this header element basically, if you visit a website, the heading part of the website, that header part is what you refer to as the header, defines the header of a document or a section. The head section of a document is defined using the header. Then we have the NAV, the NAV. Now this NAV describes the navigation, the navigation. Normally when you enter a website, you want to see the menu where you have different um, links that, that, can, um, that can usher you into other pages inside the website or external links as well. So that is navigation, the navigation links. You use this nav element to hold them. Then we have the section element. Now to make your HTML code more readable and more organized, you might, this section element, you can use it to partition every part of the page into sections. So you have a very long page, but you have the section one, section two, section three, like that, like that. So you can use this section element to partition the whole web page into sections. Then we have the article. We have the article um, element. Now, this article element defines an independent self-contained content. So, like I said, if it is a blog that you are trying to build, obviously this article will be the article on the current blog page. Like, the article on the page is what you are going to be having inside of this tag. Then we also have the aside. The aside. Aside elements. This aside element is used for sidebar elements. You can you might be working on a particular website and the, the, the there are elements on the sidebar. Sidebar that, bar. Those are what you call um those are elements you put in the aside elements that will be in the sidebar. Then we have the footer element. So the base of the website, like the towards the ending of the page, is where you have the footer where you have so, some few information, the copyright and all those things. That is the footer part of the website. So the tag is footer. So then apart from these ones, we also have the summary and the details, but you will rarely use them. So these are the ones that are very common. They are used um, extensively in writing quality HTML code. So these are the ones that will be treated for, for now. So I'll see you in the next video where we'll talk about something else. So thank you and that'll be all for layouts. Hi guys, um, you're welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be talking about styling. So three ways by which you can provide styling in your HTML document. You have inline styling, internal styling and external styling. So let's take a look at all of them so let's say i create an html document main.html so this is main.html let me add some items to it so i have don't forget your html so normally we are supposed to be writing all these things by hand but vs code helps us to release us of that of that task so let me let me write a particular element. Say, p. This is the only paragraph element. Okay. So, for you to do inline styling, all you have to do is to use the style tag. 
to provide your styling so you can be doing something like font size 20 pixels font weight maybe 700 for bold color red then i have something like um color red i have something like let me just leave it as this three for now so if i should save this and i go live you see this is the only paragraph element in the page this is the only paragraph element in the page and the color is red um this is how to do inline styling basically you can see how i styled this element inline using this particular um style i provided over here but if i want to do internal styling i have to come to the head section and include a style tag so i have to create an identifier for this element over here now two type of identifiers you can have you can either use the classes or the ids the class can be used to style multiple elements the id can be used to style only one element so if you want to target a particular element just one particular element you use the id but if you want to target a group of elements like more than one element you can use a class so in this case i'm going to be using both the class and the id to explain how you can use each one of them so let me say main paragraph okay so if i should save this don't forget that i've taken away the styling if you come back here you can see the style is no longer there so since i'm using a class over here if i want to target this particular paragraph here i can use the dot then main paragraph That's main paragraph, then I'll paste my styling inside. So I should save this and I come back here. You can see my styling is back. My styling is back. So if I want to use the ID instead of the class, all I have to do is to change this one to an ID. But if I should save this and I come back, you can see that the styling is gone because basically. This document, this style over here means throughout the body of the web page, look for an element whose class is main paragraph. Then apply all these particular styles to it, to that particular element, to those elements rather, since it's a class, you can style multiple elements. But look at the body of the page. There is no element with the class of main paragraph anymore. Rather, you have an element with an ID of main paragraph. So how you can correct this is to come here and to use the, this character over here. You can see the character over here. So this is what Naira looks like. <laughs> so main paragraph, you save it, you come back here. Guess what? The styling is back. The styling is back. So you can see how classes and IDs, how you can use them. Let me create another element over here. Then I'll use a class instead. If I say class, let me say two. Come here, dot dot para two. Para two. And then I can say. Let me just copy the whole of this. Then I'll just change those styles let me see 14 this one is maybe 400 for normal then let me instead of color of red let me use green so if i should come back here you can see you can see you can see so this is the green element while this is the um, red element. Now that um, I've shown you, this is how to do um, internal styling. Don't forget, I said inline styling is one the one you do with the style tag. 
with the style attributes of the element. Internal styling is done using the style tag in the head section. How do you do external styling? Let me just copy the whole of this style over here. So I'll take this out. If I should save, go back to my web browser. You can see no styling is applied for now. Come back here. Now I need to create a styling document. You understand? External styling means that I'm going to be styling it in another uh, part, in another document entirely, in another file entirely. So come back. I can create a new file. Then I'll say this is my CSS file. I can say main.css. So I can just paste it here. Now, me pasting it here will not change anything. Because if I come back here, you can see the style is still there. I have to look for a way to link this HTML file over here with this CSS over here. Let me partition my screen into two. So you can see the HTML document over here. Let me zoom out. You can see the HTML document over here. You can see the CSS over here. Now, this is the HTML. This is the CSS. I have main paragraph. I have para two. I have main paragraph. I also have para two. How do I link the two of them together? You come to the head section. There is this link um, tag that you need to add. So this link tag the relation of the item that you want to import to this particular HTML document is style sheet and also the href. Don't forget the href is supposed to be the hyperlink or the URL to where uh, to the document to where the document is. Basically this link tag you use it to import documents to the current HTML element. This link tag is going to be having the REL attribute. This REL attribute is showing relations. It's the relation. You can see what I have over here. This attribute names a relationship of the linked document to the current document. And this href is the address, the URL of the link resource. So, but you can see mine is main.css. So, don't forget what I said the other time while I was discussing images. You do something like this, then you bring in your main.css. If I should save this, it corrects the, the styling. So, you can see. So this is main paragraph, para two, and everything is back to normal. So like I said, you use the if you want to do inline styling, you use the style tag, the style tag, the style attribute rather. If you want to do inline styling, use the style attribute. If you want to do internal styling, you use the style tag in the head section. If you want to do external styling, you create a document entirely, then you link it to the current HTML document. That is how you connect an external CSS to your current document. So thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Hi guys, um, you're welcome back. So in this video, we will be talking about anchor links. I used it while I was explaining the href um, attributes some videos back. In this particular tutorial, we are going to be focusing on the anchor link. Now, we bring in the HTML structure. So, for you to create an anchor link, you use the A tag. So, this tag over here, it has the href attributes. So, this href attribute, I can just bring in this character just as a placeholder. Then I can say my anchor tag. Okay? So, if I should save this, then let me go live so you can open it for me in my web browser. So, this is my anchor tag over here. If I click on it, not, nothing happens. So, I can simply come to my VS Code over here. Then, I can just say, um, web.facebook dot com but to make it better https dot slash slash yes this is the protocol over here it's good to add your protocol so save this come back if i should click on this it takes me to you can see web dot facebook dot com but um let's go back so you can create as many anchor tags that you need this is the first one let me create another one so um if you want this particular anchor tag to lead you to 
to a uh, to open the link in another tab all you have to do is to do target underscore blank then let this one lead to twitter let this one lead to twitter i think it should be twitter.com without the web so let me say this is facebook tag or uh, go to facebook okay for this one go to twitter then let me add a line break here okay so save this come here okay it's opening it so don't forget the facebook will open in the same document but as for twitter if i click on it you can see it opens it in a new tab so now another thing you need to know is that you can see that i'm having the href and i'm having the target but it is only the text that i have inside here as the body of the as the inner html of this anchor link you don't necessarily have to use only a a a text you might want to wrap an image inside a particular link such that if you click on the image it will take you to to where, wherever you want it to take you to let's try it out so instead of having just the ordinary text i can say okay image so let me just bring in one of the images that i have let's say factorial then the factorial image okay so let me say the width this may be 300 the height this may be 175 okay then after doing all these ones the width is 300 the height is 175 what else can i add i think this should be this should be good for now so come here okay you can see i have go to facebook then i have this one if you notice very well the text is no longer there the text i removed which is supposed to be go to twitter that was here initially it's no longer there anymore so instead of showing me the text it's showing me this image but if i click you can see that the image i wrapped it using the anchor tag so you can see the anchor over here this is the opening of the anchor element and this is the closing of the anchor element so come to the web browser if i should click on this you can see it opens it in the new tab just by clicking on this particular um, image over here it opens it in the new tab so that is how you can wrap um, a, a an element using the anchor tag so another element that will come in handy that you need to know about to use together with your anchor tags is the button element button okay this button element over here you can just pass in any text for example um, register now or something so we, let me just use twitter for now so if i should save this guess what you can see it's giving me an actual button if i should hover on the button you can see the hover states you can see the hover states if i should hover on the button it changes color the border changes color and the background to change this color if i should click on it it does the same thing exactly so you can just if you want to create a button that is not just um, a single line text like this to be displayed you can create it to display like a button now you can also make this particular link over here look like this using css but that will be in a tutorial you can just look for it on the channel um before we we close it i need to introduce you to something we call it the title tag so the title for example fb link so this is going to be a two tip you can see you can see the fb link is showing there if i show over on it it shows me a two tip which is the fb link the anchor link the fb link so that is how you, you create two tips that that fb link being displayed over there is is called a two tip that is how you create a two tip for your link so it gives some sort of descriptive information about the link that the user is going to be, be led 
to as a result of clicking on that particular anchor element so thank you very much i'll see you in the next video that will be all for anchor links bye for now in this video we're going to be talking about the html head the head element rather so let me bring up my html structure no it should be html5 okay now we want to talk about this head element over here this head element over here now the head element is the container for all the meta information about the web page the meta information about the web page is basically um are basically those um let me say the additional information about the web page and uh, the web page apart from the elements in the web page so this element they describe the web page basically for example um you are going to be having the style tag the meta the link the script the base and so many other so many other tags like that so the title element is what you use to describe the title of the page the title element is what you use to describe the title of the page for example let me just create a paragraph tag over here Dorian 30. okay I'll see. so now um, you can see the title currently is is, is set to document seven this let me go live so you can open in the web browser for me okay let me zoom out a bit okay so if i should look, you can see the title is document you can see the title to over here document but if i should change this document the title to say um the head element and i save it guess what I'm having the head element over here so basically that is what you use to the title um, tag for so we also have the style tag we have we have the style tag which is used for internal styling the style tag there's a particular video where, I, where I'm going I'm going to explain the the style tag so you can just in course of taking the the tutorial so um this style element over here is used for internal styling so let me give you an example let me say this is an id of the first p so i can just come here and select it using the hash then first p open then i can say the color should be red supposed to no 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 i made a mistake this should be first first piece so save this come back you can see the color is what red so that is what you use the style tag for so the third one we're going to be talking about is the link tag the link tag now the link tag is what you use to um, bring in external documents into this particular into your current HTML document and the external document it has to um, Have some sort of relationship with this document. For example, if I want to do um, External styling I want to bring uh, bring in an external CSS file into this particular HTML document. I have to use the link tag so VS code gives me um, just the the um, a short way to just write it out so you can see that for this particular link the relation between this particular uh, file over here and the current html document is style sheet is style sheet so that is how you link um, external documents with this your current working html document so if i want to link another another document to this one this is what i'm going to be using it defines the relationship between the current document and an external document so it's often used to link style sheets most times you might want to bring in uh, tools like fonts awesome bootstrap css um, tailwind and all those css frameworks you are going to be using the link tag to bring those um, resources in so apart from this we also have the meta element the meta element so the meta element has a lot of you can see this element over here this meta element over here we have um, that one too 
um, this cassette describes the cassette used so we also have some other ones we have the name of uh, you can use this to describe the viewport you can also use this method to describe the keywords for search engine to be able to find the document you can use it to describe the your page you can use it to include the author of your page you can ask it to refresh your page every 30 seconds and all that there are so many things you can do with the meta tag but for now we'll just um leave it like this so um, we also have the the script tag so you can decide to bring in your script in although in so many cases you bring it in your script tag over here mm, well in let me say some cases you can also bring in your script from the head so if you want to include javascript to the if you want to add javascript to this html document you are going to be using this script tag over here but for now let's just leave it like that so So that is the um, HTML um, head basically. So I've explained the head function that it's a container that um, for all the metadata about the web page. So the body contains all the elements in the web page. So we have the we have the title that you can use to define the title of the current document you are working with. We have link by, with which you can bring in external resources into this particular document. We also have the meta that you can use to add additional information to the document then we also have the script that you can use to bring in javascript to the document so thank you very much i'll see you in the next one bye for now hi guys um you're welcome back so in this video we're going to be talking about the div element the div element so the div element is a nested html element the div HTML. So we're bringing up my HTML structure, HTML5. Okay, so the div element is a nested element, meaning that it's an element that can house other elements, an element that can contain other elements. So, for example, you can have a div element that is containing a paragraph. So let me say and it can also it can contain any element basically. It can contain another div too. So um let's let's just bring in an image here. So what image can I use? MC this factorial. Let me set the width. So maybe um, 400 and the height to say 225. So the alt text is the factorial image. Alt C. Let me zoom in a bit. No. Okay. So uh, normally this alt text is supposed to come before cut. It's supposed to come before the width and the height. Okay, so um you can see how this div works now. This is the div element, the div element, then you have um this other uh, element inside of the div. So the div is a nested element. You you are going to be using a lot of this in development. You are going to be using a lot of it while developing your applications or your websites. So let me save this and let me go live so you can see what it looks like. So you can see this is, let me inspect this page. If you want to inspect the page on Chrome, Control Shift I is the shortcut to inspect. So you come under elements. Um, so where is it okay so you can see this is the paragraph in the div this is the div over here you can see and the div is a is a block element 
by block element i mean the div will occupy the whole uh, width of the screen by default if you want to constrain the width it is totally fine you can do that using css but for now i just want us to know that the div element is a block element is an element that can um, is a nested element meaning that you can use it to it can contain uh, other elements this comes in handy where you have something like a blog archive page or product page where you have different products to display so a div can house one product another div will house another product another div will house the other products so in blog pages too so that will be all about div for now i just want to introduce us to it so i'll see you in the next video hi guys um in this particular tutorial we are going to be talking about html list it's going to be a very short one so basically list is what you use to itemize something in html let's get into it list.html so i can close the file explorer okay so now bring in the html structure so let me just rename this one to list so we have two types of lists in HTML basically. We have the ordered list and we have the unordered list. The ordered lists are going to be numbered one, two, three, four, up to the end. Then but the unordered list is going to be just um uh, we, we just having it's going to be having bullets by default, just some black dots bullets is going is what it's going to be having. So let me show you the two of them. So for the unordered list. You wrap it with a UL tag, then you start bringing in your items. Let me say the list item one, then another list item two, then list item three, then list item four okay so you can see that i have four items in my uh, on other list let me put a line break then the difference between the two of them is just to change this u uh, let me see oh okay this is the ordered list. So this is the unordered list, the one wrapped with UL, while the ordered list is this one over here. This one over here. So saving this and um, so I can go live now. So you can see how the unordered list and the ordered list. You can see the first one is unordered, while the second one is ordered. Okay, so come back here. So item one, item two, item three, and item four. Then item one, item two, item three, item four. You can see how this was numbered, and this is just having the black dot bullet point. So that is that is how to create a list. If you want to add more elements to it, you can just come here. You list out your elements. You can see the fifth element. Then list item five you can want to add one more to it list item six save this and come back here you can see the fifth element and this one over here so that is how you add a list to your html document using styling you can dictate how this list is going to be displayed using your styling so well that will be all for lists i'll see you in the next video bye for now hi guys um you're welcome back in this video we are going to be talking about forms forms now html forms are very essential because um it, it is part of those elements that it's interactivity on a web page so it's an essential component of web development, allowing users to interact with websites and to submit data to the server. A form is an organized collection of various input elements that enables users to enter data, make selections, 
trigger certain actions so it serves as a bridge between the user and the server side um, processing so now the basic structure of the html form is encapsulated within the form tag so um the html form you have a form tag outside so every form has an action and a method so so basically um normally when you have a form you are filling it with the hope to submit it somewhere so submitting it somewhere it might be at an office or whatsoever but in this case now since we are talking about web development here um the url or the address where you are going to be submitting this form is going to be contained in this action in this action uh, string over here if you want to submit to google.com or fine and good just write google.com here but most likely you won't be doing that so let's just leave that for now so for the method two methods that you have for for a form is post or get post or get equals to post it can be post or get so basically post is used for adding data to a server for example if you want to create a new um, user a new product or something after extracting all the data you post it to the save uh, to the server telling the server that okay i'm bringing information to the server you get but um the other method that you can have for a form is the get method this get method this get method you can use it to retrieve data from the server for example you might be using a search query to try to get information from the database so that information you are trying to get information from the data so the method you said it to get so that is it basically within this um, form element various input elements can be placed such as the text field the check boxes the radio buttons drop down menus and buttons and all that so each input element is represented by a specific html tag so we are going to be treating some of the some of the tags so the first one that we are going to be talking about is the input the input the input tag so let me let me take this one down first let me show you what the web browser looks like with what i have like this go live so you can see that the the web page is empty at the moment but it is just empty on the screen in its real sense if you come you can see the form that we just created this form over here you can see this form over here it is what is being displayed here you can see it so let us start to add some fields to the form that we just created so the first field that we are going to be discussing is the input field so input so VS Code is making, it will make development for you very easier. So you can see all the input types that we have. We have the checkbox, the color selector, the date, the date time, date time local, the input type of email, input type of file. Like if you want to allow the user to upload a particular type of file, images, videos, audios, documents, any kind of file like at all. So we also have the hidden. This comes in handy in development very well. So we have the password, the radio, the range, the set. We have the search, the submit, the telephone, the text, the time, the URL, and the week. So, but we are just going to be taking a few of them. So the first one we are going to be talking about is the text type. So you can see it's giving me input, then the type is text. It is giving me name as maybe, um, let me say, text field then the id most times i like my name and id to be the same thing but you don't really have to um, do yours like that so let me just say item one okay so don't forget that this id attribute like i said you use it to, to, se to select individual elements that is what you use this id attribute for to select individual elements so this name uh, attribute over here is what is going to be um, uh, when you submit this form this form will be submitted in form of key value pairs like a dictionary if you've um, learned any server-side programming language like Python 
we have dictionaries where you have a collection of key value pairs. So when you submit this data, the value of this field is going to be the value while the name here is going to be the key. So if you are submitting this particular form to a particular URL, at the URL where you are submitting it, the form data will be appearing as text field colon then whatever value that you add to it. So let's see what this text field looks like on the browser. You can see this is the text field over here. You can enter any text that you want. You can enter any text that you want. So you can see this is the text field over here. So let me zoom out completely. The reason why it is that big on my end is because I'm zoomed in. So normally this is what you will see. So you can use CSS to beautify it, make it um, look whichever way you want it to. So let me zoom in to make it more visible. So come back to VS Code. Then another input type that we are going to um, we're going to be discussing the email input type. So let me say email field. Then the next one, the ID will be item two. Save this and come here. You can see. Another thing you should know is that the input um, element is an inline element. You can see that from the first input to the second one, it just brings it side by side. It is not occupying the whole screen. It's just occupying as much as it needs to contain the current element. So let me put a line break here. OK. OK, you can see. Let me add another line break to make it. OK. So you can see now, this is the email field. This is the text field. So to make it look a bit neater, what, what, what most people do in web development these days is to add a label. So this label now, they will say the label is for text field. And the, the label can read something like full name. So if I should come here, you can see it's, it's showing full name then it's showing the field. So if you present the form like this, uh, writing your form like this makes it more presentable to the end user. The end user will automatically know that, okay, they are supposed to fill in their name in this particular place. Another way you can put some sort of um, awareness to the user that, okay, you are supposed to fill in your name here is to use the placeholder attribute of the input tag. Placeholder. So this placeholder, you can say do something like enter your full name. Save this, then come back here. You can see, you can see the the placeholder. The as soon as you start typing, the placeholder goes away. So whichever one you want to use is totally fine. But I think I'll go with this one, and um, I'll put some sort of spacing take this one away. I think I like it like this. So let me add a label for this one. So this will be for email field. So I can just do something like email address here. Save this. Come back here. You can see full name, email address. Let me put a line break here. So you can see this is the full name and this is the email address. So my full name, let me say Chris Halogen. As soon as you hit the tab um, key on your keyboard, it automatically goes to the next um, the next input. So the email, I can do something like Chris at halogen.com. OK. So any valid email that you enter there, it will just um, take it. But if you are not, if the email you are entering is not valid, it might throw up. So there are so many ways you can use to control all the errors that you can see there. But I'm just trying to introduce you to it for now. So moving on, um, another input type that we are going to be talking about is, let me copy the end of this.
so let's say phone number there is a, an input type that you can use so instead of email phone but the type is going to be tel don't forget for the first one that we did the input type is text that is for full name you can use it to collect any text single line text so for this one it's for email the type is going to be email for the third one the type is going to be telephone and tel if you want to uh, accept a phone number so you you are going to be using this three most times in your web development journey you are going to be using it often so come back here so this is the full name this is the then this is the phone number so um apart from these three there's one more input function input tag that comes in very handy and that is file and that is file so type is file I can say upload passport or something. This should be pass. Um, let me see file field. This should be item three. Why this should be item four? Save this and um, come back here. You can see. As soon as automatically it's going to be giving me it's going to be asking me to choose a file so depending on whatever if you should click on it you can see i'm on linux that is why it is giving me this particular if you're on windows or mac it will just trigger your file explorer just select one you can see the name of the file i chose is here so cancel so i'll just select any file i wanted to to select to upload rather than that is it that is the file um, input type so we can just leave it out there for now we still have the date the time let's 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 talk about the dates the dates on so um, we also have the color selector so your possibilities are, are endless dates so you can say date of birth or something date of birth this should be item 5 so i should save this come back here you can see it is asking me to select the the reason why this thing is very big is because i'm zoomed in so please take note so I can just select the year or I, I'll just enter it manually here yeah. so I can say 7 so so you can see the date of birth here so like I said your possibilities are endless they are endless so um, and let's talk about the text area so if you want to you can see all these inputs all these inputs um, all these input fields over here they are all single line input fields but if you want to accept multi-line input field from the user you use the text area you use the text area so let me copy this this is the text area let me say multi text field let me say bio or something so you have to bring in your text area so this text area now the name i can say multi um, multi-text field don't forget the label is for multi-text field 
the ID, let me see item six. So okay, item six. The ID has to be unique across board, so please you have to take note. So now um the columns and the rows. Let me let me show you what I have on this on the screen first. So you can see this text area now. You can come come to the next line, type something, come to the next line, type something, come to the next line, type again. But you can see the width and the height of this particular um, text area. If I should change the columns to maybe 50 and I save this, come back here. You can see how big it is now. So basically, you can use the col and the rows to adjust how big it's going to be. So you can use CSS to adjust the width and the height as well. I love to do this with CSS because CSS gives me much more flexibility. So let me um, make this one 30, then for the rows, let me make it 20. Save this. Come back here, you can see the rows, it's way more um, higher. So let me say, let me say 10. Okay, I think it's better now. So now you can enter whatever you want to enter. Multi-line text. Multi-line text. So the next one we're going to be talking about is the select um, field. So you might have like drop-down um, selections. Yes, that is basically drop-down selections. So let's let's get into it. Um, let me just copy the from here. Copy. So instead of multi-text, this one will be select. Select field. I can say something like select package. Okay. So select. Now um, you can see the select is asking me to supply a name and an ID for this particular field. So ID is item six. So this one is supposed to be item seven. Please, you can use whatever you want for your ID. I'm just trying to make my ID as unique and um, as um, consistent as possible. That's why I'm using item, item, item. So you can use whatever you want in yours. There is no restriction. So for the name, just like this one, I'll be using select field. So now all the options available. If I should save this, for example, and I come back here, you can see that it, it is asking me to select, but there is no option to select from. It's asking me to select, there is no option to select from. So let me go and add options to select from. So, to add the options, I can say um, option. So uh, the value of this one can be maybe one. But it will be basic. What we display the basic. So this one will be standard. Why this one will be premium? So this is two. And this is three okay save this come here okay so now you can select basic standard and premium basic standard and premium but mind you um for all these other fields if you submit the field now what you enter here is what is going to be displayed when it gets to the destination but in this particular case now if you are selecting basic what will be displayed as at the destination is the value over here one it will not display basic there so whichever way you want to code this thing you have to know how to go about it so if they select standard and they submit the form then it's going to be what, what will be displayed on the end of the at the destination the value is two so then three and so on 
so that is the select um field for you so we also have the button field so you can use input submit to submit the form for example input submit okay you can use this to submit the form the type is, is going to be submit the value is going to be something like um say submit form so you can give it a name if you want to name can be submit or let's say new submit okay save this and come here you can see the submit form let me space it isn't so okay so come here you can see that you can see the submit form over here if i should click on this form since i didn't add any url to this particular form over here i didn't add any url to this form it will it will assume that automatically i want to submit it to the current page and i'm making a post request with all this data to the current page so so that is the submit form for you okay um i have to go to let's add this um okay i've not added data let me see chris email let me see so choose file then for the dates let's choose one thing enter some jargon enter some jargon so let me just go with premium then submit form i think it's not working because i'm loading it over um the server the live server so but normally it is supposed to work okay so okay another way you can submit your form is using the button uh, tag so you can say button submit button the type is going to be submit then you enter what you want to enter over here say so you can say create new submission it is not ideal to, ha to have to submit buttons in the form so let me comment one out then save this one it does the same thing exactly you can see create new submission it does the same thing exactly so there is no cause for alarm well um that will be all for now for forms um, we have so many other fields that you can always check out when you need them like i said we have the color field let's try to bring some of them out and so we have the date the, the date time local the checkbox the radio buttons the password the number the month and whatsoever so whenever you need them you can just check them online i'm just trying to keep this tutorial as short as possible so so thank you very much um i'll see you in the next video hi guys um you're welcome back in this video we're going to be talking about responsive html so basically a responsive website is a website that has what we call cross browser compatibility on mobile if you load the website it is looking nice on desktop if you load the website it is looking nice so a website that is not responsive is a website that if you load it on either of the um, screens if you bring it to if you load it on a laptop it is looking nice but if you load it on mobile it is not looking nice it is looking all squashed and all that so when you are writing your html you need your your code or you're building an application you have to ensure that um you you make sure that on on all screens it is looking very nice on all screens it is looking very nice so responsive html is something you do in combination with css so for this video i'm just going to be introducing you to the um, chrome developer tools where you can 
and monitor the, responsiv uh, the responsiveness of the web application or the website you are working on. So if you want to check for cross-browser compatibility, um, let me load one of the, the files that we have here. So for this one, let me go live with it. Okay, you can see this particular form that we created. So for this form, if I want to check if this particular document is responsive, I will inspect it, Control shift i okay? So then you, you can see this particular icon over here, this toggle devices toolbar. If I should click on it, you can see the dimension. It is giving me um, some, some sort of option here. If you click on this option, you see on the iPhone, this is what it will look like on the iPhone iPhone SE on the XR this is what this page is going to be looking like then on iPhone 12 Pro this is what it will look like then the S20 Ultra uh, Samsung Galaxy this is what it will look like so with the help of this this is very very um, it comes in very handy you can also click on responsive and you'll be able to drag it whichever way you want to drag to control the width and the height of the screen to ensure that the page you are working on looks nice on any screen that um, um, the user is going to be using to load the website. So you, you need to take um, care, um, you need to be very careful while doing something like this so your users will not complain of not seeing some particular elements or some particular elements make them having to scroll to the end of the screen and all that. So um, responsive HTML um, it's something you do, like I said, in combination with CSS. So that will be all for this video for now. Um, thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video. Hi guys, um, you're welcome back. So in this video, we are going to be talking about JavaScript a bit. I'm going to be introducing you to what JavaScript is. So, well... HTML is the document used to define the elements in a web page. CSS is what we use to define how these elements are going to be displayed, what they will look like. Now, JavaScript is what defines the additional functionalities or the behavior of this element on the web page. So, I'm just going to be giving you a taste of it, something that you can use JavaScript to do. So, let's Create intro js dot html. I just want to give you just a one line code of JavaScript just to show you how you can how how powerful JavaScript can be. Not how powerful kind of but just to show you what it looks like. So okay, this is the HTML five. So, in most cases, when you want to bring in your JavaScript document, you make sure that your document is at the end of the body tag. The script, rather, is at the end of the body tag. So, you can do internal scripting and you can do external scripting. So, internal scripting is the one that you do in this document over here. External is you creating a separate file, then you link it using the script tag. But that's not what we are going to do. So, for you to write JavaScript in this particular document internally, all you have to do is to bring in your script tag then inside the script tag you write your javascript so let's just bring in a an element say a paragraph um this is the oh okay let me just say this paragraph the value is maybe one okay so let me say id um let me say in count okay so let me bring in a button so this button i can say increment then decrement decrease okay so Let's load the this on the web go live. Okay, you can see what I have over here, increment and decrease. So 
Now for this script tag, if you want to know if the script is uh, if this script tag is actually working, the first thing you want to do is to log something to the console. Let me show you what the console is. The JavaScript console, Control Shift I. Um, no, I don't want this. So if you come to this console over here on your Google Chrome, click on it. You can see this console over here. I, I, I'm able to log something to this console. Log something to this console. I can just come to and say console.log. Um, ready to go. Okay. Don't forget you close with your semicolon. So you can see the ready to go over here that I just you can see intro JS HTML on line 14. So obviously this is line 14 over here and this is intro JS or HTML. So it is working fine. So the first thing you want to do is to select this particular um, element. So I can just say let's I don't expect you to understand what I'm doing here. So I just want to show you what JavaScript looks like basically. So I can say let p element equal to document dot get element by id and the element I want to get the id is count. So I can say id ink why this one the id is dec okay. So let's ink equal to or let me say btn ink equal to document dot get element by id and the element I want to get is ink. So another one let's um btn dec equal to document dot get element by id okay dec now that i've selected the three buttons the next thing to do is to start configuring them so tn ink dot add an event listener so the event listener anytime somebody clicks on it then run this function so accepting nothing come to the next line then um let me say number I'm trying to type cast p element dot inner text. Let me see. Let current equal to dot inner text. So p element dot inner text. Be equal to current plus one. Okay. Well, that is the increment button for the decrement button. D is here. Um, this will just be negative one. So save this and i think basically what i want to achieve is if you click on the this button over here if you click on this one it will decrease the count if you click on this one it will increase the count that is just what i'm trying to achieve here so come back here um if i should click on this you can see it is increasing the the um the count but if i should click on this it is decreasing it you can see it is decreasing it even down to negative values so you can see what you can use javascript to do this is just something simple i just thought of on the go so this is just what you can do with javascript 
let me explain the code a bit. My goal for, for writing this particular um, set of codes is to show you what you can use JavaScript for. But when you start learning JavaScript, you will understand it better. So um, I created two buttons over here and I created a paragraph tag. So after creating my two buttons and my paragraph tag, I started my JavaScript. Like I said, JavaScript is what you use to describe the behavior of the elements in the web page. So the first thing I did is that I selected this P, this, um, this uh, P tag over here, this paragraph tag over here. I selected it and I named it in my JavaScript as P element. The increment button, I selected it and I named it BTN Inc. Then the decrement button, I selected it and I named it BTN DEC. So now that I've selected the three buttons, what I want to do now is what I'm trying to achieve is if I click on this one, it will increase. If I click on this one, it will decrease. So basically, I came to my script tag and I said, okay, for this BTN increment, add an event listener. An event listener basically is what you use to add the behavior to the element, which can be hover, it can be double click, it can be click, it can be... If they click on this particular, um, if they click on BTN Inc., it is going to be executing this function over here as soon as they click on it. Now, what is in this function? I'm declaring a variable here. I'm saying let the current value of this p count equal to number then p element dot inner text. Now, this inner text is a method that can use to get the current inner text that is in this p tag over here, this text over here. If this was somebody's name, I can use this inner text to retrieve the person's name. But as you can see, it is just a number. Now, I used the number function a constructor in JavaScript to convert to type to typecast it in case it's a string I cannot increment it if it's given me as a string so to play safe I typecasted using the number constructor so it will just um, convert it to a number for me then after converting it to a number it will save it in this variable current then I'm assigning current plus one as the value of the inner text so if it were is one before this line is going to extract the one. Then in this line, I'm going to increase the one by one. So this value here is going to be two. Then it's assigning it back to it. You understand? For the decrement button, it's still the same thing. The difference is just that instead of increasing, it is decreasing. That is just it. So like I said, it's totally fine if you don't understand this for now. Just um, get what you can use JavaScript for. You can use JavaScript for something like this and so much more. So. Thank you very much. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Hi guys. We've come a very long way in this course. A very long way. So we've treated comments. We spoke about attributes, elements. We spoke about the text elements that we have. Images, layout elements, styling, links, and all of that. Now that you've learned the basics of HTML, the next thing to do right now is to work on a project, do some sort of application of what you've learned so far in a real life project, in a real life project. So the next phase of this course is, is recorded on a separate uh, video, also on the channel, where you are going to be applying majority of what you've learned into creating a single page portfolio website. You're going to be creating a single page portfolio website. The page is going to be done using HTML only. The project is going to be looking like this. You're going to be having a header. We are going to be having the body of the page. Then you're going to be having your contact information, your email address at the base of the page. So something very simple using just what you've learned so far. So, well, thank you very much for sticking to the end of the course. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel so that when we post um, tutorials like this, you get notified via your device. I'll see you on the other side of the course. Make sure you find the video. The link will be in the description below and you can see the link on the screen as well. So find your way to the video and let's be done with HTML once and for all. Thank you very much. See you in the next video. Bye for now.